Hello out there. This is another episode of Things We Said Today. I'm Steve Marinucci, Beatles examiner columnist and several other examiner columnists. And my co-host uh, across the country is Ken Michaels. Hi there, uh, Steve. Uh, host of Every Little Thing. And this is a little different. Um, we just kind of decided today, and this is Thursday, Thursday, um, the 29th, we would discuss, give our impressions of the new Paul McCartney single that that, that popped up on the internet at midnight Eastern time last night, which I thought was kind of interesting that they they did that. Uh, um, they actually had got it into uh, UK iTunes earlier. It was uh, in UK iTunes before it got to America, and they announced it. Uh, I'm sure many of you got the email at midnight that it was out. Uh, although everybody kind of, there was a lot of buzz on the internet uh, yesterday. Everybody, a lot of people were aware of it. There were rumors flying all around. But in any event, um, we wanted to talk about the song itself and w- what our first impressions were. Um, Ken, you want to go first? Well, first of all, we haven't even said the name of the song. Oh, <laughs> well, actually, that's that's. Did we uh, did I say new song? Because that's the name of the song. It's new, which which is an interesting thing in itself, and we could probably debate that for a while. You know why he called it new, and why the album is called new. You know, my I was first. Surprised. I was surprised at a title like that because it's so simple. Mm-hmm. My you know my first thought was more along the lines of. Kisses on the bottom, where he's he's trying to be a little humorous, and unfortunately, I can't. I have I have to say, I did not hear. He was on the radio this morning, in both the UK and in um, America, and I did not hear either one of those. But yeah, I mean, I was thinking this was more a little of Paul's humor to do that. But neither here nor there. Um, what did, what did you think of the song? I think the song is a really strong song. You know, um, it's a song that after a few listens, it's stuck in your head. And um, in many ways, it reminds me of some of his more recent stuff. I know that there's always that tendency, and, and I think all of us go through this, to try to find certain songs from the past that sound a little bit like what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. And having heard what, um, in a previous show we were talking about, there was a um, like a pre-screening of some of the songs from his new album in New York City at Avatar Studios. And the person who listened to it mentioned songs like Penny Lane in there and Free as a Bird, referring to the album, not just one song. Right. But when I hear this new song called New, um, there is a little bit of a Penny Lane feel to it. But I'm sometimes wondering if I think that way only because that's what <laughs> this guy who was there at the, at the party, at the listening party, said. But at the same time, for some reason... It sounds very much like what he's been doing in recent years, and and for some reason, it I connect this with ever present past. There's something about the sound of it, the fact that it's like just under three minutes. It's extremely catchy. A few listens, and you're hooked. Um, which you could say about a lot of McCartney songs too. Right. But um, just the sound of it overall, and I like the sound of his voice. I like the production. I love the harmonies at the very end that he stuck on there. I also kind of sense a little bit of a Beach Boys feel to the song. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I was going to compare it, because it's such an up-tempo, bouncy kind of a song, you tend to think of um, maybe Good Day Sunshine, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I know that when I looked on YouTube, some people wrote in thinking of Got to Get You Into My Life, uh, because of the lyrics, because of the the uh, the rhythm of the lyrics, you know, I was alone, it took a ride, don't look at me, it's way too soon, you know, kind of like that way. You know, I probably, if I hadn't read that, I might not have thought of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But still, you know, um, I could see the connection there. But it's got a very poppy sound to it. And it, if anything, it sort of reminds me more of Ever Present Past which for some reason I know that I instantly loved Ever Present Past when it first came out. Mm-hmm. After a couple of listens, I had to hear it every single day on my way to work. <laughs> you know, it was just so stuck in my head. The, the, 
the um, the hooks in the song were just you know burned into my brain, and um, it's very melodic. It's got a, a uh, you know a, a lot. Uh, it's got a '60s feel to it. I think a lot of people who have written in have have been expressing that that right. it does have more of a beatle sound to it. But I like it. I think it's a it's a strong song. Of course, I can't compare it to the rest of the album. Right. Yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be able to say it's the most like uh, most um, commercial. I, I, I can't say that it's the perfect choice for for the single, having mm-hmm. not heard the rest of the the songs of the album. So, right. but I do like it a lot. Okay. That's how about uh, you? That's, that's interesting. I went on the. Uh, I, I had to to do some uh, a little. I had to go out on the road today for a, a thing I do every week. And I, so I took the song, I had put the song on my phone, and I had the, my phone in the car, and I was, and I, and on the way back, I listened to the song constantly, just let the song repeat over and over and over again, for several reasons. Number one, I wanted to really listen to it. Number two, I wanted to, well, I mean, I wanted to just see what I could form an opinion. And the funny thing was, I could not. In all those listenings, and I don't know how many times I heard it, I probably heard it about seven or eight times, I don't know. I could not hate this song. It's not a, it's a song that is not, that you can't, that it's very hard to hate, because it's very likable. And, and if you want to, if you want to equal that to commercial, go ahead. I did not try and compare it to any past songs, any past Beatles songs, any past McCartney songs. I just listened to it at face value, but when you said "Good Day Sunshine," it kind of reminds me a little of that. But I really didn't do a lot of comparison shopping, you know, for it because I I really like the song as it is. I think it's a great song. I'm not sure. I I think at one point somebody mentioned, um, oh God, now I'm a uh, uh, fine line, and I, I and I love fine line and. I, I didn't see the comparison exactly with Fine Line. You were, you were absolutely right about his voice. His voice sounds absolutely incredible. Whatever they did to his voice is was superb. He sounds he sounds like he's he sounds like he's forty on that on that song. That's I mean that's incredible. Um, well, some people that that um, I've noticed in comments on Facebook. They do talk about his voice because, uh, you know, there are times when, you know, he does sound older, you know, but he still sounds strong at his age. Right. I some of the like, some some of the audience yeah. recordings from the from the tour, he sounded very old. Um, really? Yeah. Um, but on this, yeah, on the single, he sounds fantastic. He he really does. I love the um, the use of the falsetto. That mm-hmm. He keeps using over and over again, mm-hmm. and maybe when I hear that part where he's singing those high notes, it's it's reminding me of the Beach Boys a little bit. But um, I try not to make a judgment so soon. <laughs> We've only had a day to listen to this, and sometimes what tends to happen is a song gets stuck in your head, you can't get it out. You're listening to it constantly, and then you need some time to distance yourself from it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a month, maybe it's a few months later. And then I think you can get a, a better analysis of what you think of the song. Yeah, um, you know, making making quick judgments on songs on on things like this. I mean, I can remember back way back when, you know, listening, hearing Beatles songs for the first time, and not uh, appreciating them. I mean, I remember it was funny um, going back to. Strawberry Fields Forever. I remember hearing it on a New York radio station, and I even remember, I believe, for those of you that remember WABC in the good old days, I believe it was Dan Ingram who was playing Strawberry Fields Forever and and actually didn't like it and criticized the Beatles at the end of it, which is absolutely amazing. I, I you know I, I can't remember for sure if it was Dan Ingram, but. Um, well, I'd certainly love to hear that comment. Yeah, I would. I would. I wish I had. I, I used to tape occasionally tape uh, air checks, and um, I wish I had that one uh, in my in my collection now. I'll tell you. Um, but you know, there. I mean, Beatles songs have always been 
have have always been things that people don't necessarily pick, didn't necessarily pick up on, especially later on in the later albums. Some there was a lot of there was an evolution of of uh, of opinion on on some of them, and um, but uh, and that's probably what's going to happen with this song. But just right off the top, though, I have to say. I was a lot more impressed with it than I expected to be. That said, it why, will, why are you why are you so impressed? Why am I so impressed? Because it sounds it sounds like it sounds like the Paul McCartney uh, that everyone expects. Uh, and I kept you know one and of the I, things I, I, I'm really I'm really <laughs> I'm starting to resent your saying that. It's like going back to the show that we did a few a few programs back where you mentioned the Paul McCartney brand. Right. You know, and I don't I don't really like that terminology at all because to me Paul McCartney for someone who studied his entire body of work is musically all over the place. I don't right. expect him to sound like a Beatle. I don't expect the new record to sound like a Wings record. You know, I expect him to come out with whatever he's feeling like putting out at the moment. And that could be anything from a band on the run type album to a tug of war album where he's working with a lot of superstars to an album where he's playing all the instruments to an album with the fireman where he's you know experimenting a bit with youth which um, is, which you is know, interesting which is interesting cuz you with you mentioning that because one of the things I did was I put together a playlist on my phone of of new and electric arguments together and the and the difference in the the difference in tone and and the whole thing between new and electric arguments is is incredible, and if anything, uh, in what way? There's a huge difference. Yeah, Paul is a lot more is a lot more gentle with new than he is with electric arguments. There's a lot more edgy. It, you know, as everybody knows, electric arguments is a lot edgier. Uh, he tends to he is quicker to uh, go past the boundaries with um, electric arguments than he is with new. New is very, the one thing, if there's a criticism about new is it's very safe, Hmm. but it's also very good. Um, Okay. But but just getting, getting back to my point, I just mm -hmm. want to finish this about the the Paul McCartney brand. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have this image of Paul that his songs are one certain way, you know, and unfortunately, the general public who hasn't studied his music may only think of him for his poppier stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is probably more in line with what they would expect of him. Right, right. But as someone who's aware of everything that he's done in so many different styles, there is no brand to me. There is no one single image of Paul McCartney, which is one of the things that I admire most about him. I certainly hope that he doesn't think that he has that image. And uh, you know, and, and actually, while I was listening to all the stuff, I was thinking, "Man, would I love to ask him about that?" <laughs> and hopefully, oh, some, that, uh, you know, that his image about well, no, about the about the Paul McCartney again using the term you don't like brand versus the fireman brand, and does there need to be do they need to be separated? And mm. I mean, that's a question we could you and I could debate. You know, for hours probably because I'll be the oh. first to admit that I don't that I think he was wrong to call the the fireman album the fireman. Uh, so, I mean, I, I I really think that that should have been a Paul McCartney album. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I mean uh, Electric Arguments. I agree with you. <laughs> so and and I mean I wrote I wrote that a lot. I remember writing that, and he responded to it, and he he was very. You know, he he was, you know, kind of noncommittal. He played, played played kind of a political answer with that, which you know, fine. You know, if that's what you want to do, but if you're going to set up the the, the boundaries, which he did, there is de- a, definitely a distinct difference between the fireman and Paul McCartney, and especially listening to Electric Arguments and listening to New. Now we the, the thing. Well, first we're, of all, you, you're making a comparison just to one song here, right? You don't and know I was what just going to the album's going to be like, right? And I was just going to say that very thing is that we're basically, well, I'm basically walking over a cliff here saying this because we don't know what the rest of the album's going to be like, and he's got 
you know, he's got other producers. It's not just one producer. So anything can happen. Uh, he's got, we know he's got Giles. He's got uh, Ronson. He's got uh, Phil um, uh, Epworth, um, Adele's producer. Paul and, Epworth. Huh? Paul Epworth. Paul Epworth, excuse me. Yeah. And um and uh, who's the who's the fourth one? Um uh I can't remember now. Oh, uh, um Ethan Johns. Johns, right. So he's got four producers. We don't know what directions those tracks will take. The interviews that leaked out seemed to say he was going all over the place. So, you know, I I don't it's probably not I mean, I don't mean to judge the whole album based on the one track, but just based on the one track, what he's done here is create, you know, is take is taken the pop side of Paul and, and kind of polished it up and put it out there again. Well, the thing is, uh, it's very difficult to judge, like you just said, an album on one song. It's difficult to judge a song when you've only had a day to listen to it, even if you've listened to it a lot, because you don't know how you're going to feel about that song or an album months later or years later. Right. And in the case of one thing that I, I think is maybe a bit unusual about me is that everything that I've listened to in the past from when I was a kid till today that that I liked back then, I still like to this day. But it's just that I may not listen as frequently to that music as I once did. If we're talking about a song, let's just say it's Listen to What the Man Said, you know, mm-hmm. which I, I loved when it first came out. I still love it to this day. I think I lo- I love the song just as much today as I did when it first came out. Mm-hmm. I just don't listen to it as much as when it first came out. So in the case of I mentioned Ever Present Past, it's now six years since uh, Memory Almost Full came out. If that song was played on the radio, I'd be jumping right to it. You know, I love it just the same. <laughs> so I really like this new McCartney song now. Chances are I'm always going to like it. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I, I don't really want to make a comparison as to whether it's better or worse than other works of his because, you know, your opinions can change over time, and um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, And the same thing, I, I tend to frown on anybody that judges an album or a single after one listen. And mm-hmm. I've come across a number of people who will make a judgment call on an album after hearing it one time, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody can. Nobody can ever say how they how they feel about an album, and know how they might feel about it years later from one listen. Well, a great so, example. A great example of that was um, Derek and the Dominoes. Um, that album was pretty much the opinion was really weak on that album when it first came out, and it took uh, it took a long time for people to catch on to it. And now it's you know it's considered one of the classics, and and um, I have to say that new hit me a lot harder than some of the other recent stuff he's done. I was more impressed with new than um, some of his other recent works. So, well, I'm well, looking forward to the new album a lot, but I will tell you that I hold an album like Chaos and Creation in the Backyard in very high regard. Mm-hmm. I like Memory Almost Full a lot. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as much as Chaos and Creation. Um, Electric Arguments I liked a lot, and I especially liked uh, the production on it and how fresh that album sounds. But more than anything, because the wait has been so long for this McCartney album, and by that I mean an album of all new material from Paul, um, whether or not you want to consider Electric Arguments, which to me I, I still consider a McCartney album anyway, right. um, you, are, you are looking at, uh, five years since that album. That's the longest wait we've ever had in between albums of Paul McCartney of all new material. So because the wait is so much longer, my expectations may be greater <laughs> than they would be had he you know, been cranking out albums every year, every two years, like he has done for most of his career. Right. So, um, but And I, I, I don't think that... I mean, that's an issue that you could say that um may may have affected your opinion of the song the fact that it's been so long and i don't think that really affected me that much uh the fact that you know it's been 6 years since his last solo stuff that doesn't 
enter into it for me. I mean, I was impressed with the song as it when I first streamed it last night. I was my mouth was going, "Wow, this is this is much better than I expected." I, you know, some of the songs um, on on uh, Memory uh, Almost Full really didn't do that much for me. This made a big impression. Mm. So we'll we'll see we'll see where we go from here. So you're telling me that right now you think more of this song than you would. I keep bringing up Ever Present Past, even though Dance Tonight was a single after Ever Present Past. And I like I like Dan- I like Dance Tonight. Um, you like Dance Tonight more than Ever Present Past? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just I'm just saying, and I again I don't I, I hate to do comparison uh, comparisons on on these things. Um, because the songs are, are what they were in, in the time they were released in. But this one is really, you know, for being six years away with, with, from solo material, and, and I just said it, I wasn't going to let that m- make any difference, but it just sounds really, really good. That's all. I, I mean, what, I don't know how else to say it. We're, we're doing this all off the cuff tonight. We don't, we're not... We're, this is kind of like I said, a little different. We're we're just kind of we just kind of decided to do this, but uh, right. yeah, I I I I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed, and I'm looking oh. forward to hearing the rest of it. I'm it, if if new is the way it is, this album is going to be very interesting. Gonna well, very interesting. You know, Paul has a habit of being musically all over the place, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect you know twelve songs that sound like new. No. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of different styles on there. To me, that is his hallmark. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. No, I I agree with you there. The question is, what are we looking at? We don't know. We don't even know the titles. That's that's the weird part because uh, they did, they didn't put the titles up on iTunes last night. So. And then there's the other issue of, do you think that? And you can't even judge like we just said, an entire album on one song, but do you think that there can ever come a time when Paul can have a giant selling album again? You know, and based on this particular song, do you think that would that it could be enough to propel him to having a big selling album? Do you Actually think I think a bigger be possible. I think a bigger a bigger judge of that is the reaction. The reaction to the song and and obviously some of it has to do with six years away. But the reaction to the song, the internet reaction, has been monumental. It's been incredible. Mm-hmm. To the point where I, uh, he could, I think he could. I think he could. The fact that his concerts, his, his concerts are packed. People are, you know, he's got a, a huge fan base, a very devoted fan base. Let's underline that, devoted fan base. It's not just it's not just a huge fan base, and he's no he knows how to work work the uh, work the room. I mean, what they did with this putting this song out was just amazing. Uh, as far as I mean, it had everybody, you know, with the little Twitter things the night before last. It had everybody get, at first guessing, and then kind of figuring out what was going on, and uh, you know, and all the things they've and everything. The whole uh, work up to last night it's just been it's it's been amazing uh, i i have to I have to say he like i said he knows how to work the room he's got pe- he's whoever he's got telling him what to do he did as good a job as, i thought david Bowie did a great job just coming in out of the blue and saying, "Hey guys, I got this coming you know and uh I mean we knew this was coming, and it still exploded and there's you know, there's got to be something to said about that. So, well, I don't think anybody on this planet would like to see Paul have a big selling album more than you and me. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I, so, I, um, I, I would, I would, I definitely hope this is this is big. I would, if I can sound a little snide, I would love to see Paul teach a lesson to the Lady Gagas and the uh, Miley Cyruses and all those people. Um, I really would love to see that. So, well, um, you know, uh, I don't want to, you know, go overboard here and say this is, you know, one of his greatest singles ever because it's too soon to judge. But right. I can tell you, Steve, that 
so many times Paul's put out a first single that I thought was going to explode. I mean, mm-hmm. The World Tonight, to me, was one of the best singles I'd, I'd heard from him in a long time. Actually, I loved Hope of Deliverance a lot. I thought My Brave Face, while it did go top 40 in, in America, should have been a much bigger hit than it was. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I like The Fine Line a lot, although I couldn't have seen that really be a very big hit. That's me personally, but certainly The World Tonight should have been a, a monster hit. So <laughs> it's just uh, my particular taste and being so aware of what Paul's been capable of and knowing that so many times he's delivered the goods and it just hasn't caught on for whatever reason. Right. So, But I would really love to see this song do very well. I would too. And uh, we'll and like we'll see what we'll see what happens. I think the the when the as the radio airplay starts to hit, so we get the numbers off the radio airplay. Um, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. And when the record finally hits the store in October, that's going to be interesting. So we will see. We will see. Okay. This has been fun. We didn't. We're just kind of. Doing it casually. There, there we go. And so, it might sound that way too. <laughs> it, it might sound too casual. I know, I know. But anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Steve Marinucci, Beatles Examiner uh, columnist, for things that we said today, and we will see you next time. Who knows when? <laughs> the way things are going, news-wise, very, very soon. Right. And uh, this is Ken Michaels, host of the Beatles Every Little Thing, saying thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.